In this video, I just want to briefly talk about uh, the new Avery Waytronics ZM300 series and making a simple uh, filling machine. Something where it's just one set point, how to set it up, how to make it work. The ZM series, instead of using proprietary uh, set point cards like all of the previous products that we used to use from GSC, it has 5 volt logic out, both input and output, three channels each uh, on the motherboard. And uh, so therefore we can go ahead and use generic um, Opto uh, 22 cards. And so what we're using today is, this is a generic four port Opto 22 uh, motherboard. It has right now plugged into it a AC um, relay and a DC input relay. And the way we have it configured, if you look at these wires here, this wire here, this white wire, goes to the indicator motherboard, which I'm going to show you here. The white wire goes to this connector that's right next to the USB connector, right there and it plugs into plus 24 volts. Then you have these three connectors here. This connector here is for um, the scale and number one is on the right side moving this way. One and two are EXC minus and plus and uh, then you skip two for sense and then um, cavities uh, five and six are for uh, EXC, my, or I'm sorry, signal minus and plus. And then you've got to remember these jumpers right here. Come standard jumpered open, where these things are not jumpered together, uh, that means it's ready for a six wire cell. Uh, you'll want to make sure you jumper each of these here for a, a four wire cell. Okay? This is the um, controls plug here. And starting with cavity number one, the right one, uh, we have we have uh, ground and then we have various outputs and inputs. Now I've created a document to show how these get wired uh, and how they wire to this. So the, the important thing to remember is that uh, plus 5 volts for the logic of, the, um, of this little motherboard, that, that logic comes from the serial port. It comes from the last leftmost cavity here of the serial port and not from this here. So you get your five volts to drive the logic on the motherboard from serial. And then uh, it's important to note that uh, the built-in programs for this unit, they want to use, um, when, when they're complete with a fill, that means that set point three has completed its fill. So if you have a one stage filler, like we're doing in this example, you want to make sure that you're using output three to be your one stage fill filler. That way when you, uh, when you complete the fill, it's not looking for other subsequent fills to happen. So the way this operates, um, I have a foot switch that controls this input, and this is input number two. I chose input number two because, uh, at least in this version of, of software, it appears that certain inputs and outputs might cross top to each other and if you're only using one of each it might not be a bad idea to have them on a different channel so um, what what I've got is this one goes to input 2 and so it's cavity 9 is the uh, the input that goes into the motherboard and then over here um, on the field side cavity 9 is from the foot switch and the power of to the foot switch comes from that 20 volts, 24 volts from the motherboard right here. So it makes a loop on up. And when I step on it, uh, it's going to perform the function of F1. In the batching filling routine, F1 is the default start and stop. Okay? And so I've got this programmed to imitate an F1. So when I step on it, okay, it tears off the scale and it turns on set point three. And you can see set point uh, three is lit. And now it goes on up 
towards the target. As it gets closer to the target, you'll see this light bar move across to tell you how full you are. And when we reach the target, which I have set as 20, bing, it turns off. And it says done. So now you take it off, comes to the bottom, you put a box back on, you hit the foot switch, and we go merrily away again. Now, F1 continues to be a start-stop, right? So if I touch it, or I press it here, it pauses, and if I hit it again, it, start, it restarts. Okay? So it's kind of a start-stop. All right. There's also a little bit of a delay after you press F1 or hit the foot switch before it actually does it. It does a tear and then allows it to stabilize. Now to change the target, you hold the select key and you hold it down. Normal toggling, tog toggling through the select key would go from tear to gross to net, right? That's your normal target, but uh, or toggle. If I hold it. It says batch, okay? If I hold it, it'll go to out one. Our out one is zero because we're using out three, as we talked about before. So I'll hit the enter key, okay? And I'll hit the right arrow to out two. And if I hit the down arrow, it'll say, oh, that's also zero. That's correct. If I hit, so I hit enter. And then I hit the right arrow key again. And then I hit the down arrow. I see there's my 20. So if I wanted to change this, say, to 5 pounds instead of 20 pounds, I just cruise on over here and then use the up arrow. Oops, up arrows here. 4, 5. And then hit enter. Out 3. And I can double check it. Yep, 5 pounds. Hit enter. And now I just go up using the up arrow. And that takes me right back into into uh, way mode. So we can try it out. I'm, I'm looking at gross weight. I just put a box on. I hit the foot switch. And it says net. Turn down the set point. Now, one of the things I've discovered, notice it's still on the old, it, one of the things I've discovered about this is after you make changes to it, it wants to reboot. So you're going to want to unplug it and plug it back in after you make changes. Uh, I'm hoping they have that fixed in next versions of software, but it's something you need to be aware of. Okay, so now if I hit, we go up to five. You notice that the barcode is correct now. There it is, turned off. So now it's working right. 